telemedicine may be the just the biggest trend in digital health in the year 2015. As we put in the words of Andrew Watson, who is the chief medical director of telemedicine in the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, he says that telemedicine is moving like lightning. By that he says that we are able to offer the patient much more than before because the technology around virtual consultations has finally come to a point where the doctor is able to give a good experience to the patient. Telemedicine has been in existence for the past 15 years in India and that's mainly due to the initiative of Indian Space Research Organization which put up many telemedicine centers across the country providing the requisite software, hardware and most importantly the free satellite bandwidth. One can see looking at the vastness of India why the telemedicine application would be relevant to a country like this. It is mainly due to the fact that the specialities are all urban centric and the vast majority of population which needs care is rural based. As of today, there are more uh, patient physician mismatch. For example, there have always been a paucity of neurosurgeons in the developing world. Recent figures suggest that there are only 1300 qualified neurosurgeons in India catering to a population of about 1.3 billion people. However, if you see a study which was performed by the United States, which is considered the modern epitome of healthcare, they suggested and they desired a ratio of one neurosurgeon for one lakh population. So how do we go about, is, it, is our situation so bad? No, the modern medicine has seen some amazing technological advances to fill this gap and telemedicine is one such technological advancement. So now, I, I'm sure you gathered from the video, but I would like to still elaborate on what is telemedicine. It's the use of telecommunication and information technologies in order to provide clinical health care, but at a distance. How does it go about? It's the process of sharing medical information about a patient between two locations electronically. The exchange of information can take place in real time. That is called like synchronous or it can take place in a, at a later date where the data is collected and then it is forwarded and analyzed. So this is an asynchronous way of doing it. What do we understand? So we see that telemedicine helps to eliminate distance barriers, which is very important for a country like India, where there is no access to medical services and there is no consistency, especially in rural communities, uh, communities and in the remote areas. So thus we see, if you see the benefits of telemedicine from the patient point of view, it provides increased access and convenience. Again, this is for the isolated communities and remote regions. Then patients have access to healthcare with lesser need for visit to doctors and emergency rooms as you saw in the video because he can be sitting in his living room and then talking to the doctor on the video screen and then the doctor could be diagnosing his illness and prescribing the medicines. The most important impact which they say is the psychological. Psychological because the patient now does not have to travel. Second, he is less stressed because he does not have to travel. He no longer has to spend time in the waiting rooms of the doctor. So overall, the patient satisfaction rate is improved. The most important thing is the financial uh, gain, which is that they don't have to incur the cost of traveling, and then they don't have to leave their work and go to the doctor and sit in the waiting room. So all these things are accrued as the benefits of the telemedicine, and also it facilitates the medical education. Like, you know, we are having uh, continuous uh, medical education in the ophthalmology department ever since it started and we are able to see uh, communicate with a very respectable institute in uh, the Shankar Nitrale and we are going uh, having an exchange of our educational information even their live workshops and conferences can be seen live by us uh, do we stop there no what, what does exactly Bhagwan Shri Satya Sai Baba, who started this hospital, what he started in the five guiding principles, 
that health care should be universal, it should be free, it should be comprehensive, it should be administered with love and compassion, and it should be preventive. This last sentence, I mean the last word, preventive, carries a very important meaning for the proper and the complete treatment of the patient. We feel proud to have joined in this effort of providing total continuous medical care to our patients by launching the telemedicine program at both our medical institutes. Telemedicine, which though started our institute in the year 2013, has been in existence at our sister institute, Whitefield, from the year 2007 itself. More than 80% of the population seeking medical aid at our hospitals fall in the below poverty line category. The common international poverty line revised by the World Health Organization in the 2005 is a person drawing $1.25 per day. And if you convert it to Indian rupees, it is 68 rupees. The Indian statistics of 2012 reveals at least 400 million people living below the poverty line based on this definition. We did a small study at our sister institute, Whitefield, and we found out the financial implication of this and how it helped our patients. They did an analysis of the data uh, of the two centers, like Barakpur and Bhuvaneshwar, the neurological consultations, and they found that 76.13% of patients from Barakpur Center and 62% of patients from Bhuvaneshwar, they lied below the uh, poverty line. This statistic is important when analyzing the financial implication of an OPD visit and the amount of money actually saved by these patients. The financial implication become clear when one understands the amount of money each patient saved by avoiding an OPD visit. We researched the approximate amount of expenditure incurred by a patient accompanied by one attendant and surviving in Bangalore for three days. This amount is extrapolated to the 157 patients who were recalled to the OPD. The staggering figure of Indian rupees of 1.45 crores, roughly translating into a US dollar of 2 lakhs 25,000 is the amount saved. For such a population, making a second follow-up visit after surgery becomes a Herculean task, especially when they are from very distant place. Hence, an urgent need was felt to link these two states from where the maximum patients are drawn to this hospital. So thus, were established two telemedicine centers, one at Bhuvaneshwar in Orissa and the other at Barakpur in West Bengal, linking the Sri Satisa Institute of Higher Medical Sciences to these two states. The telemedicine center at Satisa Institute of Higher Medical Sciences acts as a specialist center providing services to these two nodal centers. Both are populated regions of Northeast India. Now coming to our personal telemedicine sessions which go on here, here I still remember a very rare and a sick baby which was operated by me. I, I don't know how many of you are familiar of a condition called Alkapa. Uh, and we had successfully performed the operation, but the patient definitely needed follow-up. We had called him for a follow-up after three months to see if everything was okay. The patient could not definitely come for follow-up because the poor parents could not afford a second visit. And to my joy and surprise, I could consult him in one of the telemedicine consultations at Orissa and could advise him for his future treatment and was glad to see that he was hale and hearty. Telemedicine also gives us the scope to emphasize about our treatment, rehabilitation, lifestyle modification measures. Time and again we find in our society the stigma of a heart patient. Even though he is completely cured, he will not resume or will not be allowed to resume duty by his family. Telemedicine consultations help us to emphasize on all this. Social stigma and blind beliefs like no bath after surgery, certain food fads, they can be tackled, which would not happen if telemedicine was not there. The follow-up of patients after surgery as regards control of diabetes and hypertension is very, very important. Patients can't make frequent visits for the same. All this becomes possible by the telemonitoring devices which keep track of blood pressure, heart rate, weight, blood glucose, and hemoglobin. Thus, depending on the severity of the patient's condition, uh, we can check these statistics either on a daily or a weekly basis to determine the best course of treatment. Last but not the least, I would like to say that the uses of telemedicine are unlimited. They are only and only limited by our vision, imagination. Thank you.